everybody. It's time for the last part. The third and final part of the terrible Dreglen of an Eve. As in all good fairy tales, one, two, three brothers or three daughters or three of something. And as we know, the final one goes a little bit different, isn't it? So the time came for the final boy to say to his father, Father, it's time for me to go off into the world. Seek my fortune or come back here, unlike my two brothers. And the third one. Come on, this is a fairy tale. You know, it's going to be different for me. The father said, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what a fairy tale is. But uh, yes, it's, it's okay for you to go. But I've given the horse, given the dog, all I have left is my falcon. I'm sorry, that's all I have. The falcon is a huge bird that can fly off and hunt for rabbits and various other things. And it sits on a giant leather glove so that its sharp, razor sharp talons don't tear into the flesh on your hand. And the father thought the boy would be disappointed, but secretly, his whole life, that boy had wanted nothing more than to have that falcon on his hand. But he didn't want to let his father know. He was always kind of indifferent about it. He'd say, yeah, falcons are all right. I'm not really that interested in falcons, if I'm honest. But secretly inside, he really wanted that falcon. So finally, the father gave him the falcon. And he was like, thanks, father. I've got the falcon now. The big falcon was on his, on his arm. And he took his little rucksack on his back. And he waved his father goodbye. Bye, father. I'm going now. I've got the falcon. It's all fine. No problem. And he walked off and walked off. And he walked down the track with the falcon. And when he got far enough away that his father couldn't see him anymore, then a smile came to his face. I've got the falcon, I've got the falcon. I've got the falcon. He was walking along with his falcon. And he walked down the path, walking down the path with my mm -mm falcon. And he was walking along with his falcon. And he walked past the fields, da -na 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 -na, falcon, do -do 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 -do. and everybody was working in the fields and looking across. Hey, what's wrong with him? Like, what's he got there? He's got the falcon. Why is he so excited? He walked up the hill, da -da 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 -da, with the falcon. He got to the top of the hill. He's showing his falcon all around. Do -do 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 -do. Down the other side, da -da -da -da, down the hill with my falcon. Gets to the woods, didn't even notice he was going in the woods. He was so excited, he's having his falcon. Do, 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 do. He walked into the woods, the trees are getting closer and closer. Na, na, da, 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 with my falcon. Gets to the part where it's all closed down around him. And suddenly he stops and says, I've got the falcon. He's looking all around. Dark. I've got my falcon. Do, 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 do. Mm, it's dark now. It's getting a bit scary. Looks around. Sees his falcon. And he sees a light off in the distance. And he takes his falcon and he slowly go through the trees with my falcon. It's not that scary, really. Gets to the drawbridge. It's down <laughs> the castle. The portcullis <laughs> is up. He walks in. By this time, he's starting to feel a little bit better. He says, okay, with the falcon. Do, 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 do. He goes in, all the way to the end of the kitchen. The falcon flies around the room three times. Three times it flies around the room and then settles up on a hanging lantern that was hanging from the ceiling with lots of candles on it, like a big chandelier of candles. The falcon was sitting up there looking down. And the boy looked around the room and he thought, wow, look at the size of everything. It's Huge chairs, huge tables, everything's massive. Whoever lives here must be ginormous. 
I'll climb up on the chair. And he climbed up onto the chair, he's looking around, and he saw the big bowl of porridge. And uh, he started to eat. He's eating the porridge. He's eating the cereal, he's eating the porridge. He's eating, the porridge. He's eating away. Then he heard it. It's getting closer and closer and closer. Na, 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 na. And he's thinking, I hope that door handle doesn't start to turn any moment. Eh, oh, it's turning. The door handle started to turn. The door started to open. But today went home and they had put some oil on the hinges. But sadly, not enough oil. Eh, it started to creak again. Eh, and the, little, the youngest brother was like, had his spoon like that. He was looking. And in came the terrible Dregel and Hogany with the long, horrible, greasy hair. The red eye, the yellow eye hanging down. His bogey was gone. But grossly, the Dregland Hogney was going like this. Now, I'm not saying it. He was eating something. I don't know what it was. Just saying. Could be anything. But he was really oh, disgusting. So who knows? In his beard, the nest was empty. The chicks had flown. There were all little bits of bone and everything sticking in the beard. The long tattered clothes and the Draglin Hogney came in with his one eye like this and one eye like that and he was just staring at the young man like this and the young boy was like that uh, and the Draglin Hogney continues to yell at this and the young man was like that uh, and it went on like this for a long time like this and, uh, finally the Draglin Hogney looked up and he saw the falcon sitting up on the, the lighting that's up the chandelier and he spoke and you know what he said your falcon does he ever peck you with the beak now the falcon had actually never pecked him but the young boy thought this might be a trick question i'm going to see yes yeah sometimes you know, it pegged me a little bit. Yeah. And he took this gross, hairy, slimy, greasy, straggly, wiry piece of hair. And he handed it right over to the young boy. Take this. There's a fireplace behind you with a hot burning fire. Throw the hair over the fire. Your falcon will never peck you ever again. And the young boy thought, okay, I can see it that one here. If I throw this in the fire, I'm going to have to turn away from the Dregel and Hogney. Something right in there here. So he took the hair and he threw it backwards over his shoulder like this while still looking right at the Dregel and Hogney. And he said, yeah, you know what, Dregel and Hogney? My falcon does peck sometimes and he's going to peck you. And the falcon swooped down from the lighting and started to peck on the Dregel and Hogley's head. And it was screeching so loudly that the dog, which was sleeping out the kennel, woke up and ran in and started biting the Dregel and Hogley on the leg. The horse that was in the stable cantered into the room with its big, strong back legs, like kicking and kicking the Dregel and Hogley. The Dregel and Hogley was being kicked, it was being bitten, he was being pecked. And he ran, screaming from the room, across the drawbridge, into the woods, into the darkness, nobody ever saw the Dreglin Hogney ever again. And the young boy thought, okay, this is the fairy tale. This is the castle. Treasure, there has to be treasure in here somewhere. So he jumped down and he went exploring around the castle. And he opened one door, <coughs> gold fell out. Mm -hmm. Went to the next door, <coughs> diamonds fell out. Ooh. Open the next door. And there, on the floor, lay his two older brothers, lying like this. They looked lifeless on the ground. And he ran towards them. Oh, my brothers, are you okay? Are you? And he tried to shake them, but there was no movement from them. And then he noticed, lying beside one of them, 
a white stick that looks like a little magic wand. And it's like, okay, I'm just, this looks magical. And we're in a fairy tale. Might as well try it. And he tapped the middle brother with it. Oh, and immediately he started to look around. Brother, how did you, watch out, there's a, and he looked around. Where, where am I? Just wait there. He tapped the older brother. He also woke up. Look out, there's a dreadle. Where, where am I? And the younger brother explained everything. How he didn't throw, he didn't turn away and throw the hair on the fire. How he tricked that dreadle and Hogney and made him run away forever. And in the next two rooms, there was diamonds. There was gold. There was everything. And they went there and they took the pullovers and they filled them with gold and diamonds in their pockets and their backpacks and everything. And they went out and they found other horses in the stable. And the three of them rode back. The, front, the oldest brother at the front on his horse. Diamonds, gold, everything. Riding back. The middle brother behind, riding on his horse. The youngest brother behind, on his horse. I've got the falcon. Da -da 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 -da. Got the falcon. Do -do 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 -do. And it went on like that for hours. And finally, the oldest brother said, Stop singing that thing about the falcon. It's annoying. He said, okay. Then he got a bit silent for a while. Then he couldn't help it. And they came up the path all the way to the house where the father was. And he heard them coming from miles away. And then they came up, they jumped off their horse and they threw the diamonds and golds at his feet and he was overjoyed to see his children again. And they never wanted for anything else in their lives after that. He was actually just happy to have his children back again. That's what made him most happy. But it was nice to have the gold as well so that they could live comfortably for the rest of their lives. The funny thing is they stayed in that little house. I think they built like an extension on the back to make it a little bit bigger. But they liked where they lived and uh, they were happy there. And that's the story of the terrible Dragon Hogney. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time, okay? Bye-bye.